Hello everyone and welcome to Linux Forensics here at Pentester Academy. In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about collecting some volatile data. Once again, I wanted to remind us of our overall process, our high-level process, and it starts with a phone call. Someone says, hello, I think someone's hacking me or something has happened. So we're still in this box. We're in the was not there an incident portion of our process. And we're going to do a little bit of data collection followed by a small amount of live analysis in order to determine if we warrant further study. So we talked about using things like Netcat and how that could make your life simpler. We developed a couple of simple scripts and now it's time to start collecting some data. So what will we collect? Well, as we said before, we will collect things like date and time information. So why do we care about this? We care about this for a couple of reasons. As you probably know, if you don't constantly update the time on your computer, it will drift. And there are a lot of reasons for this, but it's something that a lot of people realize. Also, the time zone from your computer and the computer under study might differ. So it's important to know what the time differences are from what's on the computer and reality in order to figure out exactly when different things occurred. You will also want to look at the network interfaces. Things like, are there any funny networks that are configured? Something that's unusual or shouldn't be there? Or is there an interface that's been set up in promiscuous mode? You also want to look at network connections. You know, what kind of connections does it have? Does it have wireless connections in addition to wired connections? What does all of that look like? Other things that you want to look at. Open ports. Are there any known ports that are used by malware? What programs are associated with the open ports? Perhaps it's a standard port that's being abused by a program that shouldn't be running on that port. What are the running processes? Is there something running that shouldn't be running? Is it running as a user that shouldn't be running it? For example, did someone restart your web server to run as root so they could exploit some vulnerabilities? What files are open in general? What do your routing tables look like? What file systems are mounted? What kernel modules are loaded? You know, perhaps they've put in a kernel module that's some sort of Trojan or other malware. So these are the kinds of questions you want to ask right away. And in order to do that, you need to go about collecting data. And we've talked about collecting data in some previous videos, and now it's time to actually do it. Now, you could use our send log script that we wrote before and the send file script that we wrote before in order to manually collect all this information. But why would you do it? If you can do it automatically, why not? So what I've written here is another very simple script. Now on this script, what I've done is written a simple script that will capture some standard information that you probably want every time as a starting point into your investigation. So this script, as with the others that are running on the subject machine, doesn't start with a shebang. 
right? We want to make sure that you're running the correct bash shell. So we're going to let you manually run it. There's a usage function that's defined. And this one doesn't normally take a parameter, but optionally you can give it a listening host IP for your forensics workstation. And if you do that, it will call our setup client script that we discussed previously. And it can't just call it, as we said, it will have to source it. So here we're collecting all of that information we just talked about. So the first thing we do is we run date. We say what is the date and time and time zone on this particular computer? Uname-A, exactly what version of Linux is being run here? If config-A, what are the network interfaces? Netstat ANP. This is going to give us some good information on currently running processes and open ports. LSOF dash capital V. This will give us a nice, deep, verbose output about open files. A full process listing an internal routing table from netstat-rn. We also run route, which gives us slightly different information. We run an ls mod. This tells us what is loaded. We run a df, disk free command. This will tell me what kind of free space I have on my disks. So if, for example, somebody is storing large amounts of information, it might fill up my disk, but it's also a good way to see what's mounted. The mount command will also show you what's mounted. The W command will show you who's online and what was their last command. The last command will list logins. And I also want to cut out Etsy password to see if any new users have been added. And then I will cut out Etsy shadow just to make sure someone didn't enter a new account with an empty password, for example. So in future videos, we're going to drill down onto these various items. But for this video, I just wanted to introduce you to the different components and things that you wanted to capture. So that's all for this video. As always, if you're enjoying these videos, please tell a friend. Help us spread the word. I'll see you soon.